Good morning and Merry Christmas. Do I smell cinnamon rolls and coffee? Wow, look at all those Christmas presents under your tree. Those matching Christmas PJs. You're rocking them. Well, it's a joy to be with you this Christmas morning. I know Christmas looks a little different this year. You might be alone because your kids couldn't make it home this year. Or maybe you're staying put to keep your elderly parents safe. Or maybe it's just your immediate family and you're missing all your cousins and aunts and uncles and grandparents. I know things are different right now, but there's joy this morning because Christ is born today. Jesus is born this morning. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. Merry Christmas, y'all. Good morning. We are going to read a story together. What is this story about, Ella? Uh, Christmas. Uh, Jesus is birth. That's right. We're going to be reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see the thing that has taken place, with which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it has been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our text this morning is a wonderful text, one of the better known texts in scripture. So this morning, I want you to approach it a little differently with me. I want to play a little game of what if with you. Let's think of this story as a screenplay this morning, the screenplay for the Christmas story. And if you were God, how would you write and direct this screenplay? What would your version of the Christmas story look like? If I were God, which I realize is a most difficult and dangerous what if to play, but if I were God, this story this morning would look quite different. For starters, the location would be totally different. A stable in a small town that has little political power, that won't do. I would have cast this story in a different location, perhaps somewhere near Vatican City, in a hostel on the outskirts of Rome, close to the religious powers of the day, or maybe in a penthouse in New York City, downtown near Wall Street, near one of the world's financial and cultural centers, or maybe near D.C., a political capital, or, or maybe I would have put it right here in Austin, the third coast, the live music capital of the world. This certain story would have certainly fit in with our entire Keep Austin weird vibe. Or if I were just going for the beauty of the moment, maybe a beach in Spain or in a little cabin near the foot of one of the Rocky Mountains in some small town. But no, we get a stable in the middle of the night in Bethlehem. The casting? Well, the, the casting is way off. There's a lot of changes I would make here. Let's start with Joseph. For Joseph, I, I know exactly who I have in mind. Joseph will be played by Robert Redford. You can take your pick of Robert Redford as Dennis Finch Hatton from Out of Africa or Hubble from The Way We Were. Either can do. They both show man at his best, both masculine in the best sense of that word, but also compassionate, tender, and caring. Truly the ideal man. I'm not so sure about Joseph from Scripture. Sure, he comes from quite an ancestor, quite a lineage. But with Ancestry.com, all of us can be related to somebody impressive. All we've got to do is pay a fee and click a button. So this Joseph, hmm, I don't know if he'll do. He has the lineage, but he's also so silent. He's so passive, and from what we think we know of the story, he's so old. There doesn't seem to be a romantic side. He doesn't have any of the infamous lines like, see a kid, and he doesn't have that aura that just instantly melts you and makes you trust and like him. Certainly, Robert Redford is a better Joseph. And God, well, I would have given God a part. In our story, God is so silent. I mean, even when it comes to the shepherds, it's the angels who do all of the talking. In our biblical story, God remains largely behind the scenes. Not in my screenplay. In my screenplay, God is going to be very active. And I know exactly who's going to play God. Viola Davis. She is the perfect tension of beauty and strength love and justice, a voice that is clear and direct, and she has a presence that is felt through the screen, a charisma that is beyond compare. It, it's almost intoxicating. And in my screenplay, I'm going to give God some lines. God would make things very, very clear. We would know what was going on. We would know who was in control and what this was all about from the very beginning. And Mary... Well, the Mary of Scripture has become so iconic in our minds that it almost seems unfair to mess with her. But if I'm honest, I'm not so certain about this Mary. Young, truly too young to have a baby, vulnerable, silent strength. It's all worthy of admiration, but it's not how I would cast it. Mary would be cast as Diane Keaton from Annie Hall. Sophisticated, smart, brilliantly witty, a knockout, the type of woman who commands a room. 
Mary would be in control and we would still just adore her. And Jesus, having two children who were once newborns, here's what I can report about babies is they're really difficult. They don't sleep through the night. They get cranky at the worst times. They, they never communicate clearly. They don't understand or even comprehend direction. And they require a lot of care and a lot of work. And then they become toddlers and tweens and teenagers. It's just, it's a lot. They take up a lot of time. They take up a lot of emotion and they take up a lot of energy. So maybe in my story, I'm just going to scrap the whole baby bit. I'm thinking of some sort of grand entrance where Jesus is already through the newborn toddler adolescent years. So in my story, I want to cast Jesus as Lin-Manuel Miranda, someone who just shows up on the scene and suddenly he is the most creative, influential person the world has ever seen. Suddenly he appears from nowhere and we are all just hanging on his every word. My story is not going to include shepherds. They have no place. For starters, they're filthy from being out in the pasture working all week, and they would be very easy to discredit. Who's going to believe a bunch of shepherds? So in my story, I want the messengers to either show up during like a meeting of the UN to all the world powerful leaders or the editorial office of the New York Times or maybe even a house full of social media influencers on TikTok. And that's my Christmas screenplay. The story is set in a powerful location. Joseph is the ideal man, masculine, tender, and caring. Mary is the iconic woman, smart, certain, witty, a knockout. God is present in a way that displays leadership and care. Jesus arrives on the scene full of wisdom and full of power. And the world would instantly know because the world's powerful people would know from the very beginning. The problem is God's screenplay is so vastly different. God's story takes place in Bethlehem. It's a biblical city, but it's not one of the more important, powerful cities. It's the type of place that you are from in terms of, I'm from there, but not anymore. Beside Bethlehem, the story takes place in a stable. And maybe that was the only place they had to stay, but we make it way too pretty on our Christmas cards. We miss the mess of it all. Animals lived here, so it's not tidy. And then we get to Joseph, and he's really a bit player in the story, actually in the entire Gospels. We assume that he's an older gentleman. He comes from quite a line of people, but there's very little written about him. There's Mary, who I think is stronger than we ever show. For starters, she's a young woman who has made it through a pregnancy that made her an outcast. During the pregnancy, she makes a long three-day journey to visit Elizabeth, which is no small feat for a young pregnant teenager. And then here we find her giving birth in a barn. Tradition tells us that she is young, way too young for this role. She, she will grow in faith throughout the story, and she will be one of the most faithful followers. But at this point, she's really unknown. As for God, well, God doesn't even really make an appearance until maybe, maybe the very end of the story. The whole baby thing, it's a huge risk. A God who will require diapering, swaddling, and nursing. And the shepherds, the no ones of society, they're going to be the first ones to know. This is completely illogical. When you start to think about it, this story that we're celebrating this day is too ordinary, too common. And year after year, I am stunned by it again. Stunned by this ordinary story that contains and births God. I don't know why I let it surprise me every year. After all, messing with the ordinary seems to be one of God's very favorite tricks. 
The ordinary seems to be God's favorite paintbrush. Normal people seem to be God's tool of choice. It shouldn't surprise me. Throughout the Old Testament, in the story up until this moment, God's always been working through ordinary things. Donkeys, bushes, fleece, ladders, dreams, breezes, rain, smoke and fire. And it seems that God does some of God's best work with the ordinary. And maybe that's the gospel for us this Christmas morning. God uses the materials of everyday life. God uses the very emotions of our existence. God uses us. God's love is found in the ordinary, everyday things. The Christmas story is just one more reminder in Scripture to pay attention. Pay attention to the ordinary. Pay attention to the common. Pay attention to the human. Because if you pay attention to those things, you might find God. One of my favorite plays is Our Town by Thornton Wilder. One of the central characters in the play is a young lady, Emily. In the play, Emily passes away as a young girl. Upon arriving in heaven, she goes to the character in the play who is set to resemble God. She asks this God, this director, if she can go back and relive one day of her life, just any day. She is given the wish, and she returns to observe her 12th birthday. While she watches the day, she is stunned by the beauty of it. There is so much around her. She notices the goodness of life, the richness of each and every moment, how sacred how beautiful, how wonderful each moment really is. When she returns from observing the day, she asks the stage manager, the director, if anyone ever notices the goodness of it all. He replies with the most sad and telling comment. No, saints and poets, maybe, maybe they do some, which means that most of us don't know it. We need to find ways to become saints and to become poets so that we can notice the goodness. To find God in the ordinary moments that we often pass right by. Christmas, God's screenplay, is just one more reminder that we should not miss the goodness, the Godness of each and every moment we get to be alive. As we celebrate today, may we be present. Be present to each and every moment. Pay attention to the ordinary, to the common, and to the human. Because it's here that Christ was born. And it's here in these things that Christ is most likely to be reborn. Amen and amen.